you remember in dynamics we consider this kind of problems. We consider that a ball is dropping. A ball has a mass and it's subjected to gravitational acceleration. Just like what? Just like me dropping this eraser. That's gravity. Right? That's the act of gravity. So if you release this mass at this point, if you let it to move to drop for certain distance, let's call it H. This is actually on your quiz three, remember? And most of you got it right, but some people still don't understand the conversion between the potential energy to kinetic energy. I cannot say that I'm not disappointed when I see those kind of students who don't even know that the conversion between kinetic energy and energy conservation, which is summation of TV at T1 equals to summation of T plus V at T2. You use a concept that you can figure it out. And we also studied this problem earlier. We said that what if I put drop this thing and put let it land on the spring? Of course, we can do it, and you can calculate the maximum deflection on here. How do we know that? Which is by using the kinetic energy you have from here to here, which is one half of mass times h. Uh, you use this one half of mass times v squared equals to m times a g times h, right? That you can calculate the amount of energy, which is this one here, and this kinetic this elastic potential energy here is one half of k times delta squared. So this way you can relate the velocity to the deflection easily this way. So what kind of problems we want to study here? You, you may want notice one thing. Whenever we do this, we only have the information at only one time instant. You don't get the continuous information. Either we take this t equals t1, we said this is t2, and when it's at the maximum deflection, we call it t3. This is one major difference between dynamics and structural dynamics. In dynamics, we don't know what's going on between t1 and t2. You notice we only take one particular time instant. We don't know what happens between T1 and T2. It's like you're taking snapshots of a motion. You know, you take picture right now and you take picture later on, but we don't know what's going on from here to here. We don't have the techniques. That is what you're gonna learn from structural dynamics because we know that if the time can advance from T1 to T2 and T3, we all know that time is continuous. Therefore, if we can have the expression of displacement as a function of time, that can actually help you to understand the true dynamic characteristics in the dynamic system. So how do I solve this problem? So let's consider not the ball dropping on the spring, because this is, is boring. We already did it before. Let's consider this. Suppose I have this ball, I still have the mass here. Now I want to attach to a spring. And what do I do? Then I want to apply the force. Like this. So imagine that you have some sort of spring device and you lift it with some displacement. Now imagine what if I release it from this displacement? What happens to this mass? The mass is going to go down, but because there's a spring, once it hits the, the maximum deflection here, what's going to happen to this mass? It will bounce back. So in time domain, I think you can imagine that this behavior actually looks like this. Initially, you pull it to a def deflection, which is right here. So this is displacement. This function of time this is time. It's going to look like this. Right? It's going to look like this. So, in this example, I will show you how we actually solve this problem. Not knowing just the maximum one point at this point, no, we're going to get a whole thing. So how do we do that? First of all, we take the force equilibrium. 
Because here there's only only force. There's no moment in this problem. We simplified it. We said the summation of all forces must equals to what? Equals to mass times acceleration in the corresponding direction, right? So we simplify this problem by considering only one only a vertical direction. There's no horizontal direction here. It's only one direction, so that's why I don't put the, the subscript because we only this is a one dimensional problem. There's no force in X, it's only force in Y. So here, summation of force going in like this. What kind of force do we have in this problem? You have the force P here. You also have the inertia, right? Inertia means if you have the mass, you must have the weight. And that means at the center here, you have AG. But this is a constant. That's the weight of this mass. So that part is a constant. But in the meantime, you also have this K, right? Now you know that the K will provide, the spring will provide a spring force acting always in the opposite direction of motion. Therefore, when the force is, when the P is pulling up, the K must be acting down. You can call it FS, right? And when this goes down, and the P must be, FS must be acting up. So if you put the force equilibrium here, depending on which direction you want the set to be positive, if you say the upward direction is a positive force, then we put everything together, then what do we have? This will become for the force on the left hand side. And this will become this. First of all, you had the P. P is going up, so it's a positive, right? Spring force is K times deflection. And deflection, let's call it S. Just like the deflection we displacement we use. So what's the spring force? It's just a spring constant times corresponding displacement. But remember, if the force is going up, spring force must be going down because that's in the opposite direction. So that means this must be negative. K times S. Right? And remember, these two, the sign will always swap. If you apply the force to be up, and the K will be, must be up. So they will always carry different signs. And the other one here, AG, unfortunately, carries the fixed sign. No matter you define the positive direction to be up or down, AG always falls down. Correct? So in this way, because we said upward direction is positive, unfortunately, AG will become negative. And you can certainly change that by changing the positive direction if you want to do that. However, because we said positive is up, so this one is negative, is what? Is mass times AG. And remember, this is just W, the weight. It's, constant, it's not a MA. Now the whole thing equals to what? Equals to mass times acceleration. So this is our governing equation. Now we can actually rearrange signs. Like what? We can rearrange signs by moving the KS from the left hand side to the right hand side and keep the other uh, two on one side. If I just swap these two, so the governing equation actually becomes this. It becomes mass times acceleration plus spring constant times displacement equals to P minus weight. Right? I just move this P minus M times AG. I just swap these two by my moving my negative KS from left hand side to the right hand side so it becomes positive. Now what is A here? A is nothing but the second order derivative of S. So can I say that this actually equals to M times S double dot plus K times S equals P minus W. Right? So this is the Garvey equation. That is one of the simple quadrant problems in structural dynamics that we're going to solve. Because here, our objective is to find out the expression of S as a function of time. So what's this kind of problem? In fact, I put a double dot, but you should know that the double dot is nothing but just ds squared dt squared plus k times s equals p minus w. So what does this strike me? What's this? Differential equations. Right? This is a differential equation. And that's why you have to learn differential equation. Because you're going to need that knowledge 
in grad schools. Now I will just give you the answer. I will skip. I will, I will skip this part. I will just give you what's the answer for this one here. The answer for this one. If we let simplify the problem, so this is actually step one, and step two is if we said there's no force over here. Let's say that the spring settles to the equilibrium position, and the whole motion is only triggered by what we call free vibration. That means I will lift it, but then I remove the force. There's no force. The reason why this mass is oscillating, bouncing back and forth, is because of the spring. In that case, I make this whole thing on the right-hand side to be zero. 